children of Israel, the land that was in Canaan, the promised land to the children of Israel. And what happened was, uh, you know, they went in, they conquered lands, and you know, they, the 12 tribes, they were helping one another, they fought together, and uh, they conquered lands, hallelujah, that God has promised them, that God has gave them. And uh, eventually, you know, uh, God's, uh, Joshua, through the wisdom of God, through, you know, God spoke to him, began to divide the land, and uh, divided the land into the 12 tribes. Can we have a look at the, 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 the slide, the 12 tribes of Israel, the map? So, 12 tribes of Israel, uh, Manasseh, and, uh, you know, they're all allocated over there, and uh, the Jordan River, as you can see, and on the eastern side of the uh, Jordan River is the half tribe of uh, Manasseh, uh, Gad, and uh, Reuben. Hallelujah. And uh, on the western side are all the rest of the, uh, the tribes of Israel. And God has given them those lands. God has promised them those lands uh, before they even cross over. Uh, God promises them and it came to pass. Let's look at the scriptures. Uh, Joshua chapter 21, verse 43. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land they sought to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. And the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as He solemnly promised their ancestors. None of their enemies could stand against them, for the Lord helped them conquer all their enemies. And verse 45, not a single one of all the good promises the Lord has given to the family of Israel was left unfulfilled. Everything he has spoken came true. So all the good promises that God gave to the children of Israel, it came to pass. And uh, it came true. And, uh, and what happened was, you know, um, over on the eastern side, after God has given them all the promises and, you know, it all came to pass. Um, the half tribe of Manasseh, the, the tribe of Gad and the tribe of Reuben, they, they, you know, as you know, the tabernacles was on the western side in the city of Silo. And, uh, you know, the, all the children of Israel would go over to the, the, to, to the tabernacle there to worship in Silo. And what happened is, these two and a half tribes, they built an altar on the eastern side of Jordan. They built an altar there. And, and the rest of the, the, the tribes, they saw, you know, they thought, that uh, you know these two and a half tribes uh, they what are they trying to do you know they set up an altar are they you know they don't want to come over to the tabernacle here where the presence of god is where the shekinah glory of god is they don't want to go to the altar there and worship but instead they want to set their own altar you know that is made up of stones and uh, what happened was all the, the different tribes they came they wanted to go to war they wanted to destroy these two and a half tribes because it's an abomination, you know, they are sinning against God. In their mind, is they, you know, they are separating from us. They don't want to worship, you know, in the tabernacle, in Silo. You know, they don't want to worship God after God has given them all the promises. They want to break off. They want to be separated from the rest of the nation of Israel. And when they all got together, when all the other tribes got together, and then when they were ready to go to war with these two and a half tribes, of Israel, what happened was they, you know, they, they had the wisdom. Ten, ten representatives, ten leaders out of the ten tribes went over and spoke to the leaders of the two and a half tribes and said, why are you building up an altar over here? Don't you want to worship the real God, the one and only God? And they begin to explain, these two and a half tribes begin to explain, oh, you know, the reason why we want to set up this, uh, uh, this altar over the eastern side of the river Jordan is a replica because you know we are separated from the rest of you you know by the river Jordan we you know after our generation have passed the rest of our generation our children's children's generation you know our grandchildren's generation and when they see this altar this replica of the altar they know that uh, God has been faithful to them Amen. If we are not going to worship here. We are not going to offer our sacrifices here. We are not going to do anything. But it's just a memorial, just a replica, just a reminder of God's faithfulness. Amen. So they, they, they solved that dispute and they didn't fought against one another. Amen. And uh, what happened is, 
you know the word of God has been fulfilled in the book of uh, Deuteronomy as you can see you know blessing and cursing you know choose for yourself you know uh, God through Moses we're going to speak to the children of Israel if you will follow all my ways if you will follow all my commandments, if you will follow all my statutes and law, you will be blessed. But if you disobey, you know, if you um, don't live according to my words, don't live according to my commandments and my law, you will be cursed. And all these sicknesses and all these plagues will come <laughs> upon you. So it came to pass because the children of Israel, they live according to the commandments of the Lord. They live according to the laws and the statutes that God has laid, has given them. So they were blessed. And all these promises came into fulfillment, into uh, fruition. And uh, it's for you and for me too, if we live our life according to the word of the Lord, amen? If we live our life if we are obedient to God, if we live our life according to the scriptures, according to the word of God, amen, the blessing of God will come upon our life. You know, it will come into fulfillment if we live by the very word of God. So, just as, you know, God promises the children of Israel, God promises is unto us too. Uh, I'm going to go on, uh, just to let you know, uh, somebody counted, uh, uh, the promises that God has in this Bible and uh, um, He counted and there's almost like 30,000 30, promises that is written in the book okay <laughs> so go read the Bible and uh, go find out your promises 30,000 of the promises of God is found in the Bible and uh, if you calculate if you live to 80 years old uh, 80 years old one day, one promises for you. It's still more than enough for your whole lifetime. 80, 000, uh, 80 years times 365, uh, probably is, is maybe 20, uh, you know, 26, 27,000 promises. Still more than enough for your whole life, amen? The promises of God is more than enough for your 80 years of life, unless you live, you know, more than 80 years old. If you live 90 years old, 100 years old, you know, I'm sure it's more than 30,000. Go look for it. Hallelujah. God's promises is yes and amen to us. Hallelujah. If we will live by the word of God, the promises are there for you and for me. Hallelujah. Just as God promises those, pro uh, those uh, good promises to the children of Israel through Moses, through Joshua, you know, it came to pass. And just as the promises of God to you and for me, it will come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. So God is faithful to all His promises. We are here to declare to you that God is faithful. Just as He is faithful to the children of Israel, He will be faithful to you and me too because we are heirs. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. The day you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, you inherited the kingdom of God. You can call God Abba Father. Amen. So you are the sons and the daughter of the Most High God. Amen. So the promises are for you too. And uh, God will be faithful to all His promises. The 30,000 or more promises, God will be faithful. And we read uh, 2 Peter 1 say, By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the one who calls to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. And because of His glory and excellence, He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and escape the world corruption caused by human desire. The promises of God, they are very, very precious. Peter said, you know, it's very precious, you know, precious, keep it, you know, the promises of God, they are so extremely precious. And in the book of uh, 1 Peter and 2 uh, Peter, you know, uh, Peter wrote, the, the, is the author of that book, and he wrote, he called, you know, the Lord, he called the word of the Lord, precious, precious, precious. He, he, there were many, pro uh, he used the word 
precious, precious, precious. Many times in, in the book of First Peter and Second Peter as you read it. So they are very precious. So, you know, precious to your life, precious to my life, amen? So, lay a hold of it and uh, keep it and treasure it in your life, in your heart, because they are very, very precious. So, in the scriptures here, Peter declared that we are partakers with Christ because we have, we know Jesus Christ, hallelujah, because of His glory, because of His excellence, because of His uh, mercy and His grace, because we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So these promises are, for you and for me, very precious. Because it comes from God. Amen. It leads to abundant life. So you want a good life. You, you, you know, you want a blessed life. <coughs> Seek those promises. <coughs> Live for God. Know Jesus Christ even in a much deeper uh, uh, way. Open up your hearts, open up your, your life and know Jesus even much more. Have a deeper relationship with Jesus and you will find all these precious promises and you can stand upon these pro precious promises and you will be able to live a life that is not been corrupted by the world. So you are a partaker, it's a participant or a partner or a sharer with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of God. So we are partakers, we are sharer with Christ Jesus. We are a partner with Christ Jesus for all these precious promises. Next one. Some scriptures that uh, um, I want to read to you this morning and that uh, when you go back, just meditate upon these scriptures. Uh, if you're going through some challenges in your life, you know, uh, you're going through, uh, you need um, answer to your prayer, you need the direction in your life, you need the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, meditate upon the Word of God. Search the Scripture because it's going to bring you uh, uh, answer, it's going to bring you correction, it's going to bring you healing. Amen? The Word of God. Uh, so we need to prayerfully study the Bible. 2 Corinthians 1 20 says, In Christ, all the promises of God are yes, but we must search the Scripture to find and claim this one. All the promises are God, of God, they are yes and amen. That's for you and that's for me, the promises of God. Uh, some of the scriptures we are reading. In verse 23, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? So God is not a liar. The God of the Old Testament is also the God of the New Testament. The God of the past is also the God of today and the God of the future. So He is not a liar. God is not a liar. Amen. He is... All the words that He spoken, it will come to pass. He is not a liar. Sometimes we lie to save ourselves, right? You know, we tell some white lies. Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, when my wife comes back from a long flight. <laughs> so, you know, uh, why this? Why that? Why did it? You know, we try to avoid it and uh, sometimes we fall into the trap of... <laughs> this, is, this is being recorded. You know that. <laughs> It'll be on YouTube. <laughs> God is not a liar. God is not a liar. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Without wavering for he who promised is faithful. We have a high priest, amen, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, He is our Lord and Savior, He is our Restorer, He is our Redeemer, and He is also our High Priest. He is forever interceding for you and for me. Hallelujah. So let us hold on the confession of our hope without wavering, because all the promises of God will come to pass and will be fulfilled. It's yes and amen. Hallelujah. So Hebrews chapter 10. So meditate upon these scriptures. If you're going through 
you know, some difficult times, begin to meditate, you know, stand upon the Word of God. I have a high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is interceding for me. He is a high priest over the house of God, you know. I want to draw near to the house of God. I want to draw near into the kingdom of God and, and see all these promises be fulfilled in my life. I stand upon the promises of the Word of God. Declare, stand upon the Word of God, hallelujah, for your lives. The next slide, please. And uh, what are God's great and precious promises? I mentioned it, 30,000 promises in the Bible. If you live 80,000 years, 80, times, 80, uh, 80 years times uh, 365 days, enough for your lifetime. Enough for your lifetime, the promises of God. Next one, please. God will protect you. Matthew chapter 16. And I tell you, you are Peter. Greek word for this uh, Petros, a last piece of rock. And on this rock, you know, huge rock like you, Greta. I will build my church and the gates of Hades, Hades, the power of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriments or hold up against it. You know, Peter believed in Jesus Christ. He believed that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. And if you read the earlier scriptures, you know, uh, the Lord Jesus said, you know, uh, the flesh did not reveal, man or flesh did not reveal you uh, about this. Because when uh, Jesus asked Peter, who am I? Uh, who, who do people call me? Uh, but who, who do you say I am? He said, you are the Son of God. Amen. You came here to save. You are the Messiah. You are the Lord and Savior. And Jesus said, you know, uh, man and flesh did not reveal this uh, to you, this knowledge to you. But it's God the Father who revealed it to you. And Jesus said, you know, upon this rock I will build my church. The Holy Spirit has revealed uh, this wonderful great knowledge to you and me. That Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. If you make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, hallelujah, if you declare with your lips and with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. He came and He died for you. He saved you from your very uh, uh, sin and He gave you eternal life. If you stand upon that truth, amen, upon this church, hallelujah, every demonic power, you know, every, uh, the gates of hell or Hades shall not come upon you. You will be protected by God Himself. So we are a part of the church that Jesus built. The church has been has faced a lot of, uh, you know, attack. The devil comes, you know, Satan wants to come and to steal and to destroy and to kill our life. Satan continues to try to destroy, destroy but God will not allow that to happen because he promised, God promises that he will not allow Satan to destroy you, your life, amen. He will not allow, if we stand upon the word of God, if we stand, and say that Jesus Christ is my Lord, He is my Savior. I have inherited eternity, I have inherited eternal life. Not even Satan, you know, can destroy my life. Not even Satan can take it away. Stand upon that truth. God will protect you. Hallelujah. There's no fear from evil. The next one. The scripture says, I will be with you. Matthew. 20, 20, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. To the end of the age, when Jesus comes again, when the kingdom of God comes again, to the end of the age, I am with you. God has promised that He will be with you and with me. And if you read in uh, the other the other scriptures, I, I believe that Paul, you know, did mention. Uh, can we go back to the earlier slide, Deborah? Two Timothy four. You know, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May not be charged against them, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Paul went through extreme difficulties, you know, uh, just to preach the gospel. 
Hallelujah. And over here, you know, when he wrote this letter to encourage this young pastor, young Timothy, you know, he said, he encourages Timothy, he said, you know, everybody left me, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Hallelujah. God said, I'll be with you. No matter where you are, I will be with you. God said that. Next one, please. I will strengthen you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 says, The Lord is faithful and He will strengthen you and set you a firm foundation and guard you from the evil one. And uh, in Philippians chapter 5, Strength for all things in Christ who empowered me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through Him who infuses inner strength into me. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. <coughs> Paul said, you know, I'm strengthened by the Lord to face every situation. Uh, you know, he was whipped for the gospel's sake. He was beaten for the gospel's sake. Many times he suffered hunger, no food to eat, no place to sleep. But yet he said, I found strength in the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, God strengthened me. He, he said, I'm contented. No matter what I go through, the lack that I have, I am contented with what God has given me. God strengthened me through all my difficulties, through all my trials and my testing, through all that we are, I'm going through. God said, I will strengthen you. Next one. And this is a, the great, wonderful scriptures here. Jesus has promised that He will come again. Okay, hallelujah. We, each one of us, we're crying out, you know, Jesus, Maranatha, Maranatha, Lord, uh, please come again. Uh, I, I'm reminded of a, of a brother in Chimchacho, and his name is uh, Jason Porteous. Uh, Rene, you know, I think some of you know him, you know, as a, every time when I speak to him, you know, he say, he say, uh, there's something about him that uh, uh, he, he talks a lot, uh, he sees all the wickedness of the world, he, he say, um, you know, he's, he's expanding the wickedness of the world, he's coming into explosion and all. And uh, every time I talk to him, he would say, you know, Maranatha, come Lord, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, you know, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> and uh, it's great to talk to him, but uh, it's an encouragement too, because uh, keep on crying out for Maranatha, Lord Jesus. There's sometimes that we are so overwhelmed by the situation of our lives that we, we would say, Maranatha, come Lord, help me Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. And uh, God will come at His right timing, not for you and for me to determine it, but God has promised in His scriptures, in His word, that He will come again. Hallelujah. Uh, I know that we live in different parts of the world. We hear a lot of news today. All the news that you hear, you know, are very negative. And uh, you read into the newspaper, you go into Yahoo, you go into CNN or whatever. You hear of all the unrighteousness that is happening in the world today. We need the Lord to come. We need His righteousness. We need His peace. We need the Lord to establish His kingdom upon earth. To set everything right again. So the Word of God is such great encouragement. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Where I am, there you may be also. The promises of God is that we get to spend eternity with Him. Hallelujah. That's the promise of God. The Lord Jesus said, I will come again establish his kingdom Jesus is coming back again hallelujah he is coming back again let not your life let not your heart be troubled but instead be encouraged that all this wickedness of the world all this unrighteousness will come to an end because the, the Lord Jesus is coming kings of kings he's the king of all the kings he's the lord of all the lords <coughs> He's going to establish His righteous, righteousness upon earth. So be encouraged. Hallelujah. Uh, do not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus that He will come again. 
and uh, a few scriptures to share with you. Uh, how do we receive God's promises? We must patiently wait. Abraham waited 25 years until he was 100 years old between uh, God's original promise and the birth of Isaac. But when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Said, Surely blessing, I will bless you, and multiply, I will multiply you. And so after he has patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He waited 25 years. But how much more you and me be patient as you wait upon the Lord, as you wait for God to answer your prayer, as you cry out to God, be patient. It is one of the ways to receive God's promises. Be patient. The second one is obedience to God's will. Just as I mentioned, you know, the promises that was written to the children of Israel in the book of Deuteronomy, you know, all came to pass because they were obedient to God's will, because they were obedient to God's commandments. And the children of Israel, they received all those precious promises. Land were given to them because they were obedient. For you have needs of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. You need to have endurance. Things are not happening, maybe, you know, uh, according to what uh, you've been praying, according to what you're thinking. Things are not happening, but there's something greater that God has for your life. Be patient, wait, because there's something greater that God has for your life. To receive God's promises is by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews chapter 11 By faith. Stand upon your faith. Stand upon your belief. Have the faith of God. Believe in God. And all these promises will come. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Last week, I, I mentioned about you know, if you, if you start thinking through your flesh, if you start thinking through your mind, you know, the promises of God, the supernatural things will be filtered away. Because our flesh don't believe in supernatural. Because our flesh, our intelligent mind, uh, don't believe in miracles. It's impossible. You know, we try to reason it out. Uh, you know, we try to uh, reason it out, think about this, think about that. If we filter it through our flesh, if we filter it through our own intelligence, the supernatural will not happen. The miracles will not happen. But if we believe by faith, if we surpass our flesh, if we surpass our intellectual mind, you know, then the supernatural can happen. Amen. We have to surpass it. We must not let it, we must not filter it. The promises of God is yes and amen. It's supernatural, it's in the spiritual mind. Don't filter it through your flesh. Don't think it through your own mind. Amen. Believe by faith. Believe. The scripture says, without faith it is impossible to please God. And He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Seek Him with all your heart and with all your mind. With faith. What are the promises you need to claim? Are you shy to claim your promises? What are the promises that you want to claim from God today? As you read, as we went through all the scriptures, can you stand upon the word of God and claim your promises? Can we read? Do you need peace? Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Do you need peace in your life? We all need the peace of God. You know, uh, Otherwise, we'll be depressed. Otherwise, we will go through life with worries. Uh, worried about a lot of things. Worried about our jobs. Worried about our finances. Worried about our investment. Worried about our family. But we need the peace of God. <coughs> it surpasses all human understanding. The shalom peace of God. So, claim that promise. 
Do you pray in the morning when you're praying? Do you claim the shalom peace of God over your life, over your family's life? Do you claim it? And uh, I'm a prayer warrior. Uh, I pray. Uh, Gail and uh, John Villagas this week. I pray for your whole family. I know all your children now. They are uh, uh, Jackery, Paloma, and uh, Angelica. And I pray for uh, Josh. Uh, Josh, Stephanie, and uh, Travis G. You know, I pray for this household. I pray the shalom peace of God be upon them. And the different ones I'm praying to. So when you pray, claim the peace of God upon your life. Claim the promises of God. Claim the shalom peace of God for you and for your family. Because the enemy wants to put confusion into your life. The enemy wants to destroy your household, your family, your marriage, your children. That's what the enemy wants to do. Sometimes husband and wife, they argue and they fight over small little things. If you are married, you know how is it like. God, uh, uh, the devil can uh, you know, put something in your thoughts and you fight over small little things, you know, and it becomes so big that the, the, uh, the anger, the, 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 the fight becomes so big that uh, as you look back, you say, hey, you know, it's just a small little thing. But that's what the devil wants to do. Pray for the peace of God for your family. Temptation. How many are tempted? We are all tempted, okay? I'm the first one to lift up my hands. <laughs> Temptation. Hallelujah. Uh, there was a time when uh, uh, Pastor John McGowan said, I'm also tempted, you know, when I walk through the streets of Chim Cha Choi. So people, uh, you know, especially summertime, you know, people are wearing, uh, um, you know, very sexy clothes and all, revealing, very revealing. And he said, you know, as I walk, you know, I will, I'll be praying in, in, in my prayerful language. He said, you know, I'll pray and not look around, but there are times that you look around, right? You know, <laughs> temptations, hallelujah. And uh, with your iPhone and with your iPad, with Wi-Fi, uh, with all the the, the, the the numbers of computers in your home, you know, it's just amazing. In a home, so many computers. My home, I have one, two, three, four computers, three laptops and a desktop, you know. And it's so easy for children. Uh, my, my kids, you know, even uh, jo uh, Josiah, he's only nine years old, it's easy for them to click into something. And then, you know, it leads into, you know, uh, with all the spyware and with everything, you know, the, 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 the screen will come out, you know, or whatever. The screen will come out. It's so easy to do, to, to, even for children. Gone were the days where uh, we don't have computers at home. Um, gone were the days when I was a young boy. Nothing of this sort. You know, media, nothing. TV, no, nothing, you know. And uh, we were pure. <laughs> but now, with all these computers, it's just, uh, you know, they, they say that 70% of, of, the, uh, of the computer, of the internet, 70% uh, of those are X-rated, uh, pornographic by nature. And it's so easy to, to, to dwell in it, to get involved in it. Temptations, you know. The scripture says, no temptation has seized you, except what is common to man. It's common. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, it will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Amen. You can stand upon that temptation. Pray and ask God to help you. Hallelujah. Pray and ask God to help you to overcome that temptation. God is able. The, the Bible says here, the scripture says here, God is able to make a way for you to come out of your temptation. We heard of so uh, we heard of marriages where you know are broken down, and uh, it is so sad that uh, oftentimes you know we heard of the man uh, that is out there fooling around uh, in the bars and all, uh, you know, with different women and young women and all, and uh, they you know they're having a fight with their wife, and the marriage became a big problem and issue. Divorce begin to happen. Because of the temptation of, of the devil, 
We need to make a stand. We need to understand that God said that no temptation has overtaken you such that it's common to man. And God will provide a way for you to step upon it and then it will come under your feet. God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13, uh, James 1, 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God to give generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. You're going through some real trials. You're going through some testings. You're going through some difficult times. You need the wisdom of God to help you, to direct you, to guide you. Sometimes man and uh, sometimes our friend can give us wrong counsel. We need the wisdom of God. If you lack the wisdom of God, you can pray and ask God, please give me wisdom to deal with this situation. Help me, God, to wreck me. God is faithful and He will give you wisdom. Amen. That's what the scriptures say. God will give you the wisdom. 1 Peter 5 10. And the God of all grace who call you to His eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will Himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Are you a victim of slander? Are you a victim of divorce? Are you a victim of sicknesses are you a victim of a slander somebody is trying to break you down somebody is saying that uh, you're useless you're no good you're stupid and uh, they're slandering you they're trying to destroy your life they want to kill you are you a victim but the word of god says and the god of all grace who call you to his eternal glory in christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. God will restore you after you have suffered a little while. You're going through some real difficult situation right now. Understand. Stand upon the word of God. Understand it's only for a season. It's only for a little while. Because God says, you know, I will restore you. I'm your restorer. Last week we read some scriptures uh, that uh, if you confess with your mouth, you know, God is said faithful, He will forgive you. Uh, if you confess with your mouth unto salvation, salvation, the Greek word for, uh, in the Greek text it says that uh, salvation is wholesome restoration. That means good health, riches, uh, your providence, everything. When you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you know, you are confessing that Jesus Christ is your restorer. He restore you wholesomely. He restore you with good health. He restore you uh, with your provide with his providence. He is able to provide you. He will restore you after you have gone through it a little while. Jesus will make you strong. He will make you firm. He will make you steadfast in your life burden with you. If we confess our sin, He's faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. Are you burdened with guilt? Guilt of the past. Often time, you know, the things of the past come back into our mind. Uh, the things that we have spoken come back into our mind. You know, and uh, all the things that we have done in the past come back again we are feeling ashamed we are feeling shameful because of all the things that uh, we have done in the past we are burdened with guilt but the word of God says if we confess our sin if we confess it to God amen uh, he is faithful and just will forgive us and purify us God can purify you no matter how uh, um, guilty we are no matter how uh, sinful we are no matter how dirty we feel we are but God is able to purify us from every unrighteousness that you can mention claim your promises please claim your promises please stand upon the word of God and claim your promises hallelujah they are there for you God is faithful amen can the uh, worship team comes